Hi everyone, this is Mansi from the One in Asankhya project. Today we have with us Vidhi Jain. She is currently working at Microsoft Research India. She has been actively researching in the domain of artificial intelligence. She has interned at the Montia Institute of Learning Algorithms and Simon Fraser University, where she went to the MITAX Global Links Research Internship Program. She has also received the City Women Leader Award in 2017 and the co-founder and she's been a co-founder of the ACMW Bitspilani chapter. Uh, let's start with the interview now because the list will like go on and on. Uh, are you ready Vidhi? Shall we start? Yeah. Yes, Mansi. Okay, great. So the first question is, you were a research intern at the Montia Institute of Learning Algorithms, one of the largest academic laboratories fully focusing on deep neural networks and their applications. What did you work on there? What is your advice to students who are aspiring to seek internships at the lab? So um, I was working for my bachelor thesis with Professor Aaron Kurville on deep generative modeling. And uh, this idea is basically when you have a lot of samples, um, you want to estimate what distribution this is coming from. And once we know the distribution that it's coming from, we will be able to generate samples which share the similar underlying properties of the given set that we have. So that idea has recently gained a lot of advancement. Uh, the popular models that we all hear about are generative adversarial networks, autoregressive models, and variational autoencoders. And uh, my work focused on can we use these generative models, which have gained, like become so popular these days, can we use them in identifying uh, when a model is seeing something new, something novel. So what he, we humans can understand uh, very easily that this is something that we had been seeing so far before, but this is something new. But our current models often do not have the ability to say that, okay, I don't know this. So this is still an active area of research and a lot needs to be done in the field of generative modeling. Okay, and uh, how did you secure this internship? Like, what will be your advice to people who want to work here? Uh, so, uh, securing this internship, I think uh, Mila, or uh, now it's been called Quebec Artificial in uh, Intelligence Institute, um, they are like looking forward for like enthusiastic applicants who are look, like interested to experiment something new. Uh, show the independence and drive to actually start something of their own and work towards it. So you just, so I had just emailed uh, like Aaron about this, uh, that I'm interested to work in this sort of a field. And uh, similarly, it's not just Mila, I would say, um, I had been doing this for a lot of uh, uh, like good places. Uh, there were a number of other accepts and a hell lot of rejects. Mm -hmm. So uh, the main thing, the main advice I would like to give is don't like lose heart on one particular application or two particular applications. Just trust yourself that you want to do something of this sort. Uh, work towards it with all you, what you have and then like go and apply. I think trying was the most important thing. And then there is serendipity. Like, yeah. Sometimes it just works out. We're really happy that it worked out for you in case of Mila. So the second question is MITAC's Global Research Internship that you did in 2017. According to you, what aspects of your profile stood out while applying for the same? And what were your takeaways from this internship? What was your key learning? So uh, MITAC's is a... Uh, MITAC's Global Link Research Intern Program. MITAC has a lot of programs. It's a Canadian institution which uh, supports uh, higher education studies for all international students. So in this particular program, I was able to like pro provide a good enough match uh, of the among the selected projects that we had to mention. I was able to uh, like list down good enough matching projects which were aligned to my profile 
and i think that's what caught catches the interest of the professor as well so my tax is not going to um, evaluate just based on profile of a student it also looks at uh, what is a good enough match and how to include diverse group of projects okay. so again um, there the experience was great in terms of meeting a whole community of uh, international students who were working in very different areas um we were assigned a mytax global link mentor who was uh, like appointed by the uh, non profit only and she uh, our mentor was like great in terms of taking care of uh helping us out in moving to a new country and helping us understand the different uh, procedures of opening a bank account of how to get the travel um smoothly and then there were some couple of trips organized as well by my tax other than that my professor had been really accommodating i mean the whole lab had people each person was from a different place okay. so overall it was a very holistic experience and working one of one with a professor really helps you to understand whether uh, you have the research appetite or not and um, also understand like what it takes to do research so it helped me kind of solidify what i want to do further yeah like find your career path your so, calling yeah identify more closely to what it be what it means to be a researcher oh that's great so the next question is um, you attended the acm chi conference on human factors in computing systems which is the premier international conference of hci you received you received a scholarship as well to attend this conference so um, what did you present there what uh, like what was your project about so my project was focusing on uh, how we can use the current technological uh, devices that we have that we engage with in day to day basis how can we use the data to actually detect some of the symptoms that um, mental health that are indicator of mental health so what happens a lot like a lot of our data is being collected all the time and this has become the main mode of uh, money uh, business for a lot of companies nowadays but it's like i was when i was in undergraduate uh, studies i was thinking that maybe we can use this data for other purposes as well something which can help us log our health symptoms and uh, mental health is something very subtle and it's a very uh, serious problem especially in india where the ratio of uh, health professionals and uh, even the psychiatrists and psychologists is way more skewed than the number of people who need the help so it was an extended abstract which i did it um, by myself like it was a student research competition which means that there need, shouldn't be any faculty involvement and um the, i did it with one another uh, batchmate of, like a senior student of my college um and it was more of a proposal like explaining what is the problem how we intend to solve it this is the architecture that we propose these are the sources of information that we identify that could be useful for uh, what this mental what what are what could be the indicators of a mental state of a person so that was well received and it was a great experience to be there in the conference um to understand the diversity so i would say that kai is not only the most a uh, premier co uh, conference in human computer interaction but also one of the most diverse conference like it's not just computer scientists there is a whole uh, spectrum of people that come there like social scientists linguists um people with very different backgrounds and to get a chance to interact with them uh, opened up like a lot of possibilities that i would want to work on and Uh, it also let me see like what are like the potential opportunities to create impact um in application or practical side of things but why like the theoretical aspects and the uh, technical depth is also important 
so, right okay regarding the scholarship that scholarship uh, is acmw scholarship for travel for conferences and uh, that i received because i like when we started uh, our acmw chapter we uh, we were like promoting the idea uh, about to other students and this was one of the uh, idea that came up uh, during the brainstorming of why we should start this chapter so this conference is a one time conference that helps female students who are uh, aiming for travel grant and it helps supports them for domestic or international conference grant okay that's amazing nice so the next question is um achieving a rank of 15 among the national finalists at microsoft build the shield is truly commendable can you describe what went behind the preparation for this event uh microsoft build the shield um was a very very nice experience in my second year so it's basically a competition where they test uh your how how well uh you are aware about the basic hacks and tricks i guess but it's more uh, gets more serious when they basically looking at your skills of how do you, how well do you understand basic rsa algorithms basics of uh, cipher and encryption and uh, how to say this it it's kind of building the shield in sense of security for the computer systems okay. and so initial round was a lot of fun like we were a team of four people working in the same lab and uh, we we were learning on the fly for it like it just started that we are not really prepared for it we'll just participate and during the during that time we were learning about okay how do you um, say figure out there is a audio clip or uh, audio clip has a particular message in it in the frequency spectrum of it and how to images might encode a message in it those kind of very interesting questions came up in the first round and the second round we were invited to hyderabad at uh, microsoft idc office where the whole setup was like it's uh, kind of similar to age of empires setting um, but each team was given a country and a domain to protect and there was norm there were number of things uh, that you would expect in a gameplay so uh, that experience was complete pure sh- uh, game like a play uh, we were never serious about it it just turned out uh, and it was uh, such a thrilling and a learning experience so i would like from the take away from that was like um, we should really engage in all these sort of activities like hackathons and competitions and coding quizzes and all these new opportunities which help us grow not from the perspective of winning them but just from for the perspective of fun and the joy of learning from it yeah that that sounds great yeah that makes sense actually because a lot of us we just think that okay we're not going to do it and then we just don't even try so yeah i yeah, think i've had very little knowledge about yeah. all of this before participating into it and then it's through that process i think i learned okay so the next question is um what is a day in the life of a research fellow at microsoft like <laughs> <laughs> so at microsoft research uh, you would not just find like people doing machine learning or ai but also doing great work in all sorts of fields like systems um, microsoft research is actually known for the work in systems uh, then cryptography uh, a lot of product related uh work and technology for emerging markets is a very important uh segment of microsoft research which focuses on like what areas we can impact with our technological advancements and my day at microsoft research typically involves staying relevant in my research field by reading a lot of papers and um trying out like we we come up with new ideas we try and test it quickly through experiments and then brainstorm it on how we can uh, move forward with them how we can combine two ideas um 
then a lot of it also goes in discussing and talking to other researchers like what they are working on uh, we had a lot of talks that happen every week uh, there's seminars or talks every other week that go on and those are real learning opportunities because we get to hear from uh, researchers doing brilliant work and they have come as a visitor to microsoft research and uh, yeah that's like not just focused on what core focus that i have uh, to work with my mentor but also like i get a broad spectrum of research that's going on in computer science so you said that you read a lot of journals and papers so which is your favorite like your go to website or journal like that you use to keep yourself updated like that's your number one on the list um i guess like with, with the coming of archive there is a flood of papers that we have and it's a good thing because initially a lot of good papers weren't available for free um i particularly like open review where uh, we have like for various conferences like iclr we have a uh, op- like open discussion the reviewers uh, so what happens in a conference paper that we submit a paper to a particular conference and then the reviewers comment upon it and there is a rebuttal phase where the authors have to reply back clarifying certain aspects of it so just reading a particular paper requires you to think critically about it but uh, when you have something like an open review where the reviewers actually post their reviews online for public reading uh, anyone can post actually anonymously or publicly review on that paper so it reduces like it adds it reduces the time to analyze a paper and it adds another perspective of a well known researcher of that of that particular field to help you understand that paper so i really like reading open reviews and uh, other than that i just follow the conference proceedings for the top conferences in my uh, area okay so winning the city women leader award must have been an amazing experience uh, what was your biggest learning from it so city women leader award was also a different tangent that i had explored through the like similar to what microsoft build the shield competition was uh it's basically a competition for business uh, school students where they basically assess you on leadership skills and they want uh, at the final round of it they are looking how you behave how you are equipped to deal in an executive board scenario or like how do you handle uh, your presentations with a boss or how do you conduct an interview um how can you present a project idea or a business idea to a board of uh, executives uh, all these all these assessments were actually carried out on us on a whole day assessment period and uh, it was completely a different uh, tangent to what i had been preparing myself for i was thinking about a research career but this gave me a uh, like a like not just a sneak peek or like a whole day experience of what it would mean if i were uh, taking a leadership position um, in some company and i think that's very important because unless you see yourself there unless you visualize yourself uh, you're never going to make that effort and uh, that made me more open to the idea that okay sometime later in life i will be willing to take up a leadership role um uh, in whatever opportunity that comes to me and uh, turns out that city women leader award was not just focusing on b school students but also a bunch of top technical institutions where um just to encourage that even that leadership is important in technical uh, side of things as well so there are technical product managers and those things so yeah it changed the perspective for me a bit and it was great to meet like amazing amazing um women leaders working like their achievements in uh lots of different fields who are currently at most of the iams and uh, isps and overall i met a bunch i made great friends i guess <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations for winning the award 
Um, so I believe your first ever research internship was at FZI Germany. I'm not trying to. I'm not going to try saying the full form of the institute. So how is it pronounced really? Like FZI. Hochschule Zentrum Informatik. Okay. <laughs> so um, it means research institute for information studies. Okay. So how was your how has your journey with artificial intelligence uh, evolved from there to Microsoft Research India? um so i think the that was one of the first bold step that i would have taken before that i was really afraid about how i'm going to actually uh, like go about doing things and i think it was a kind of peer effect like a, my uh, roommate was applying a bunch of seniors were applying they were encouraging that you have a good profile why don't you give a shot i was like i would nobody is going to take me that's not worth so they're saying that it's worth the effort maybe not in your second year but by the end of, like by the time you come to your third year you will know what it takes to apply and you will have a fair amount of idea uh, if you start early right now so with that in my mind that okay i'm just preparing for my third year applications and let me just try and mail right now with that hope that's how i started and of course in my second year that's the time that i saw most number of rejections because we just had had a uh, six months of like computer science courses before that first year was complete general study uh, sort of general curriculum and uh, so wh- when i went to F- like when i got through fzi i was initially interviewed for as a java developer and there luckily my uh, mentor was giving me freedom to explore the idea of semantic web um, and knowledge graphs and uh, how the big data and this machine learning could play an important role they wanted exploring machine learning particularly but it just gave me a sense of what's the scale of problems that people deal in real life at a very early age and that kind of motivated me to try even harder like struggle even further to get into a better places where i can work on problems um that that relate to me that i can identify with and i think that's that message has been the shaping uh shaping factor i guess for how i came all the way from there to microsoft research but the hardest part was getting started right getting started and getting started and getting that initial first incentive first reward if you say in reinforcement learning you say the first reward actually provided that direction of continuing in research okay that's a really nice way of putting it so um from ntsc to kvpy and several other merit scholarships you have managed to maintain a remarkable academic profile any life mantra that you follow to strike this balance um i think the life mantra is kind of dependent on how i am i'm generally very slow in doing what i am doing uh, so in school people used to call me a tortoise <laughs> because i used to take really long time to complete the same amount of homework that was given to other people uh but i think that came naturally within me because i i made sure that i am putting my best in whatever i am doing and this is very different from like thinking that i will um, do what i love but rather i follow i whatever i am doing i should love that and i should do that to my best abilities uh, eventually things will unfold when you will actually love do what you love but sometimes you get need to get started and start doing uh, things not under the force or pressure of people but you have to really say to yourself that i have to love what i'm doing to give my 100% yeah so, and another thing is that success builds upon itself um this is uh, very this i've seen throughout my progress like one successful thing um brings on another successful thing 
in, in terms of opportunities as well as in terms of mindset so at times i have felt when i have got things done some way i thought maybe it's by fluke but it motivates me to actually work harder to ensure that whatever happened in past wasn't fluke like it wasn't a coincidence i'm not an imposter kind of thing and that's how success builds on itself and you should always try to maintain that successful record for your uh, i i mean well, that's how things unfold in a resume but in the background there have been multiple rejects and um multiple failures as well so another message i want to clarify is that it's not that i have to copy someone else successful journey or someone else has to copy mine it's about um, taking like just just following what unfolds in life with the best you can right makes sense <laughs> thank you so much for this inspirational message for our viewers so um while setting up the acm women bits pilani chapter what obstacles did you face how did it help the female students of your campus so um acm bits pilani chapter um has been existing for quite some time and it has been the best student chapter like for four times in a row and i initially when i joined the college i was i was a part i joined as immediately as i joined the college i guess yeah within that first semester within the starting interactions itself a number of girls had joined that group um and by the end of the first semester we saw that there were only three girls remaining like out of the 15 that had joined 15 or 20 that had joined only three remained um so that became a very uh, sort of we were also hesitant that should we continue in this group or not but talking to some of the seniors about this problem actually helped that they emphasized like the most things that you're going to learn in a college uh, are going to be through this technical institution like you're not going to learn a lot of things through courses or um, just like by your own self it's through this community um and that i felt a lot like as, by the time we came in our second year and third year we saw a similar trend happening in acm um, chapter of our campus so in our third year we realized that maybe something needs to be done about this like the females on the campus which are already few in number they're missing out on the opportunity to improve their technical skills by not being part of the group um, and there's no such group within the girls hostel as well to help them so we started off with little small meetings and eventually with help of a lot of other people we uh, formulated it as a official chapter so that the things get reinforced and they actually so what happened as a consequence we tried to establish uh, some presence on the campus by working towards uh, conducting some events so it was like the first time that we uh, as a group of all female developers had developed a particular game contest which was typically so what happened used to happen in these game contests was um, most of the time the development has to be done by one or two people two three people and the tasks were given to like the closest junior of the senior sort of those things happened so even though we went and asked for it explicitly it was hard to get those opportunities and the guidance to do them well so that changed up quite a lot when this chapter was created like uh, we tried to formulate the game uh, plan in such a way that each person could get a sub module of it so the, the game, entire game was composed of 10 games in itself and each person got to do some part of it so most of the participation came from the first year rights who were keen on learning basic web development skills and that's how we get got them started and other than that uh, our main uh, aim had been to bridge that gap between what the cacm chapter does and uh, we prepared um, 
at least the first year uh, and the second year girls in Bits ACMW chapter so that they contribute as an active member in the Bits ACM chapter. Um, that's how things are. Uh, I, think, I think still things are going good and a lot, a lot of enthusiasm and um, participation is continuing in those groups. That's good to hear. So um, what tips would you give to females applying for the GHCI poster session? Okay, um, GHCI poster sessions are a great way to meet potential um, people from the companies and uh, some of the professors. Um, the poster session for me was one of the first opportunities to like learn how to showcase the work that I have done. Um, and uh, any particular tips for poster session means like you have to prepare what you want to deliver and be ready to stay in touch. So I think the follow up remains important. Like people will come to you and show their interest and say that we would want to know more and stay in touch maybe hand out a business card to them or have a QR code ready to engage in a dialogue with potential uh, people who are interested to work with you. Uh, other than that, just don't limit yourself to GHCI poster, like aim for something much bigger. Um, you can, there are a lot. So I got to know about this quite later, uh, about the student research competition. But I think people can people do a lot of interesting work in the tech fest that we have in our colleges and uh, as a part of uh, course projects, which if done with a little more effort uh, can be submitted to a lot of uh, student research competitions or um, there are student tracks for um, posters and papers in a lot of conferences. So definitely try to put out your work there. It helps you gain confidence um, and a good network so you can hope for further collaborations with those people so yeah th that uh, you shouldn't limit yourself to just gsci i think there are a lot of other opportunities to explore as well uh, you mentioned about following up with the people you meet so like how do you go about it just drop them an email and uh, like what next no i wouldn't so following up with the people who are interested to continue the conversation or um, so it, it's something I don't mean by saying this is don't go and spam people. Right. Uh, don't go and um, out of uh, don't go and start to talk out of compulsion, but try to see what um, what could be the common point that you can go and talk to them. What would uh, make sense for them to engage in a discussion with you. So if I'm inter like I hear a talk from someone, the easiest way to go and engage in a dialogue is after hearing someone's talk. So some you hear someone's talk and you like some of the points and didn't understand some of the points, um, you can go and follow up to them saying that I saw the so-and-so talk of yours and I want to understand this, I like this, and this is how my work relates to yours. I think that helps to build that initial connection with a stranger that you might want, so that the follow-up and the dialogue can actually continue. A lot of time that happens, uh, so I mentioned my initial phase of uh, uh, getting the internship before FZI had happened. We email professors, um, but we forget to mention what connects us with them. What What is that in them, what they're working on, uh, that is important and kind of connects with what we can contribute in. So whenever trying to start a dialogue with a stranger, I think it's the best that if you can figure out what's the connection going to be, that will really help to drive the conversation forward. OK. So um, apart from all the research and technical work, uh, what are your hobbies? How do you pass time? <laughs> the four years of college have been a breeze, I feel. Uh, just most of the time that I used to find was to spend with people, uh, talking to them. Um, other than that, I think I make time specifically for 
uh, relaxing myself through dancing, like uh, dancing as if no one has seen. <laughs> I think that really helps me to relax a bit. And other than that, like I, I'd, I'd like to keep myself busy. <laughs> nice. So uh, we loved interviewing with you. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Um, so thank you. Bye, Vidhi. Thank you. Thank you.